This video covers the content of the SAP Cloud Platform Workflow Virtual Event, content which is available on GitHub, and specifically, it covers the content for exercise six, which is all about exploring the API hub and the workflow API. In this exercise, we're gonna log on to the SAP API Business Hub. We're gonna look for and find the workflow API specifically. We're going to then configure an API environment and in the context of that environment, we're going to attempt to request workflow definition information via the API. We're then going to add some scopes to the workflow service instance and then make that call again for the workflow definition information. We're then going to create a new workflow instance via the API, and then we're going to check that newly created instance in the Fury Launchpad. So let's get started. The first thing to do is to log on to the SAP API Business Hub, otherwise known as the API Hub here. And I've already got that in uh, this other window here, so I'm gonna log on. Okay, the first thing to do is to notice that actually within the API Hub, there are lots of different types of content. We're interested in the Workflow API, so we can search for it here. And the search result that is uh, most relevant for us is this one here, the Workflow API for Cloud Foundry. So let's select that. And we're presented with details about the Workflow API endpoints. We can see that there are different aspects that the API covers. User task instances, task definitions, workflow definitions, workflow instances, and so on. And for each of these different aspects, for each of these groups effectively, there's a list of endpoints, combinations of verbs, HTTP methods, and nouns, the endpoint path infos. We can explore these aspects here. If we have a look, for example, at the workflow instances group or aspect, we can see that there are lots of different API endpoints with combinations of different verbs and nouns. So read only with get, for example, and some updates with post and patch and put as well. In the API Hub, we can not only explore APIs, but try them out too. For that, there is this concept of an API environment. And by default, you get a sandbox environment, which is a test environment with sample data but it's better and more convenient to configure your own environment, which you can use to point to your own instance of the workflow service. So you can see your own data and use the APIs for real. So this is what we're going to do in this step, configure an API environment. What we need to specify when we're creating our new environment is a number of values that relate to, first of all, what the API endpoint root URL is, but secondly, and perhaps more importantly, how to specify information that will authenticate the calls. So within the configure environments pop-up, the first thing we need to do is to go and work out what the starting URL, what the root URL for the API endpoints are for us. Now, we can see here that we're instructed or advised to go over to our dev space home. So let's actually just go and have a look at that. So let's open up a new tab, log on to the cockpit and go directly to the dev space. In the dev space, we can see we've got our apps here and we've also got the service instances, one of which of course is the default workflow service. When we look at the default workflow service or the workflow service instance, we can see that it has a service key, order process workflow underscore MTA credentials. And this service key was actually created when we deployed that workflow, that order process workflow in a previous exercise. The details of this service key contains everything we need to know to configure our environment over in the API Hub. We can see here that there's a node endpoints and within that a node called workflow rest URL, which is effectively the root URL for the workflow API for us. So this is the value we need 
api workflow sap cf apps eu10 hana on demand.com workflow service rest so we need to make sure that that one is the one that we select in the starting url or whatever is relevant for your particular service key on your instance so that's mine i'm going to give the environment a name my env and the rest of the details are related to oauth2 authentication specifically the authentication method that will be carried out here when making calls is the client credentials grant type of oauth2 so for this we need to specify the client id and the client secret and also specify enough information for the api help via the environment to construct the url to go and request a token so the first thing we need to do is to grab information relating to this parameter this parameter and this parameter within the service key information so we can see here we have a uaa node just here within that we've got the client id node the client secret node and also the url node so this is the information that we need first of all we need to specify the client id so that is this value the next thing is the client secret which is down here make sure you get all of the value but not the double quotes of course now the token url is the resulting url from an oauth2 perspective that is used to go and request a token that will end in slash oauth slash token as you can see here but it's specific to the instance that i have here so this is why we need the value of the uaa.url node which is here and what we're looking for is the consumer subdomain which is effectively as it's described here the most significant hostname part of the fully qualified domain name value of uaa.url basically it's this part so we specify that which then gets prepended to the host name here and the landscape host is the rest of it or represents the rest of it which is here now note that the default has cf apps as a prefix we need to remove that so that the resulting token url looks exactly like the url here so https colon slash slash 5539 and so on authentication eu10 hana on demand.com 5539 authentication eu10 hana on demand.com i want to apply this environment to all the apis in this package the package that the workflow api belongs to and also of course i want to save it so that's it as far as configuring an environment specific to my workflow instance okay so now we've got the environment let's go and pick within the workflow definitions aspect the get v1 workflow definitions api endpoint to retrieve a list of the latest version of each deployed workflow definition hopefully we should see our order process workflow definition that we've previously deployed we can use the tryout button we can if we want to specify some values for these parameters here but we're not interested in that right now we can just go down and hit the execute button but what we see is that the result we get is a status code 403 as shown here this status code 403 basically conveys that access to this resource which is effectively this thing here workflow service rest which is the api route and specifically the v1 workflow definitions api endpoint access is denied user does not have sufficient privileges why is that that's because and as it's described here each of the api endpoints is protected by a specific scope and the scope that is appropriate in protecting this particular endpoint is described just below it which is the workflow definition get scope if we have a look 
at other API endpoints, for example, the the endpoint that allows us to create, to start a new instance, which we'll be doing also later in this exercise, the scope that's required to access that endpoint and interact with that endpoint is workflow instance start. So we're going to fix the problem with getting the 403 response by adding those scopes to the workflow service instance. We can do that with the CF program. So the easiest way to do that is, of course, to use the terminal in our App Studio. So let's open up another tab here, going straight to the App Studio. OK, I've got a terminal here already. Let me make that a little bigger. And I'm also going to collapse the Explorer so we can see a little bit more of what we're doing. OK, so as advised, we want to just double check the instances that uh, we have. Now, I'm probably already logged on, but we can check as well. CF target, just ask for the target information. If I wasn't logged on, it would tell me I wasn't logged on, but I'm still logged on here, so we can continue. CFS, which is short for CF services, will give us a list of service instances. And we can see here in this list, we have the service instances that we can also see just here. So the list we can see here is the equivalent of the list we can see here. And we can see that we have the default workflow service instance there. That's the instance that we want to update. So we know that we want to update this service instance, giving it the workflow definition get scope and the workflow instance start scope for a little bit later on in this exercise when we want to start a new workflow instance. Now, as described a little bit further up here, another term for scope is authority, and that's the term we'll be needing when we're updating the workflow instance. We can use the update service command within CF to update the default workflow service, specifying, let me just move that there for a second, specifying that we want the workflow definition get and the workflow instance start values to be defined as the authorities in that workflow instance. So let's do that now. CF update service default workflow. So what we're saying so far is we want to use the update service command. The target of that command is the default workflow instance. And then we can specify some parameters here. And they're in JSON format, so we've got to be very careful to specify this correctly. Authorities, and we specify two authorities, so we specify them in a list in an array. Workflow definition get, and also workflow instance start. There's the end of the array, there's the end of the map, and there's the end of the string. Great. So now we've updated the default workflow service instance, giving it those two scopes or those two authorities. We can actually check to see that that has actually worked using the CF curl command, which, is, which allows us to access a, a level deeper using the API. We can just try this command out now as we're here. And we can see that the parameters for that particular service, given that service instance GUID that's retrieved there by the subshell, we can see that the authorities are workflow definition get and workflow instance start. Great, so we can now retry that call in the API hub to list the workflow definitions. So let's move back to the API hub. Let's go back to the workflow definitions aspect and just retry that. Previously, we got user does not have sufficient privileges with HTTP status code 403. Running that again gives us what we were hoping for in the first place, which is a list of workflow definitions. The list contains one item, which of course is the order process workflow definition that we deployed. Great, that's our first successful API call in the API hub.
that was a read only call. So now what we want to do here in step seven is to try out a write call. We're going to try and create a new instance of that order process workflow definition. So we want the workflow instances aspect. And if we just collapse this one by clicking on the method name, we actually we get straight to the one we want, which is the post to the V1 workflow instances endpoint, which as it's described here, which starts a new instance. Now, one difference between the previous call and this one is that being a post, one would expect, and it's true, we supply a body, we supply a payload in the call, and this is where we can define that body. We can also see that the scope required is this workflow instance start, which we've already added to our workflow instance, to the default workflow instance. So we can copy the payload from here. And then once we hit try out, we're able to edit the value and replace the sample body with what we want. We're specifying here order process as the value for the definition ID. That's the ID of the workflow definition. And we can pass a context just like we passed a context before. So let's hit execute and see what we get. And we get a successful response. We get a 201 response code and in the body, we get the details of the instance of the workflow instance just created. There's the response body. There's an example of what the response body should look like. And again, this call was only possible because we added that workflow instance start scope to the instance to the workflow instance earlier. That's great. Let's double check that we did actually create this and we can check by looking in the workflow monitor for workflow instances. Let's jump to the monitor now. Let's look at our applications. Let's jump straight to our Fury Launchpad site. And we want to use the monitor workflows workflow instances tile. Now, of course, we don't see any by default because the filter only shows us instances in erroneous running or suspended state, but we want to have a look at them all. And we can see here that the most recent one, order process, is completed. And it was started at the 30, on the 31st of July at 1328, which was just now. That's the one that we created. So that's it. We've explored the workflow API in the API hub, and we've successfully made a couple of calls to that API, one to look at the workflow definitions and two to start a new workflow instance. Thanks for watching.